about countless others who unknowingly come in contact with places where meth was made? It's probably never crossed your mind. It didn't occur to the family you're about to meet either, and the consequences have been devastating. All right, what we're looking at here is this uh, particular pump will sample for acid gases. Uh, we're also going to pull a thermal desorption tube, which will analyze for volatile organic chemicals here as well. There's now more evidence that exposure to methamphetamine and the chemicals used to manufacture the drug pose a significant health risk. It's amazing how much of the drug actually becomes airborne and gets spread all around. And the significance of that is that it contaminates everything. Contamination spreads beyond the room where the drug is being made, traveling throughout a house, an apartment building, or even a hotel. So that when you come back six months later and start sampling, you find methamphetamine on the walls, we find it on the ceilings, we find it in the carpet, we find it essentially all throughout the structure. Um, and unfortunately what that means is that anybody that comes into the structure afterwards will also get contaminated with the drug, even the people that were never even a part of the lab. Exposures from cooking the drug can be deadly, and the dangerous residue left behind can affect anyone. And I hear about people, oh yeah, meth ruined that guy's life, got hooked on it, and I'm thinking to myself, uh, yeah, meth ruined my life, and I never even didn't even know anything about the stuff. Never touched it, never even seen it, never knew what it was made out of, nothing. But yet it's destroyed my life, pretty much. Yeah. Nice. Brian and Katrina Evans were living the American dream. After years of hard work, they were ready to buy a new home for themselves and their three daughters. Their search led them to a two-story home near the end of a quiet cul-de-sac in Larimer County, an hour's drive north of Denver. I wasn't really excited until I walked in. But when I walked inside the house, it looked like a s ski resort. I mean, it was gorgeous. You always think in the back of your mind, it's, you know, is this too good to be true? You know, if pass it up and it was just a good deal, you passed up a good deal. And try not to do that, especially when you're trying to better your life. Sometimes good things happen. The Evans bought their dream home and moved in. I was proud to give my, my girls a home that they were happy to bring their friends home to. It was more than we ever thought we'd ever have. Best of all, the house was perfect for Katrina's home daycare center. It, it just felt really good to feel that successful and to feel like we had finally accomplished our goal. Then, one day, after living in the house for a year, Katrina got a phone call from a newspaper reporter. She wanted to know when it was first disclosed to Brian and myself um, prior to the purchase or after the purchase of our home that we had bought a, methan a prior methamphetamine laboratory. And my heart sank. She said, the sheriff had listed your home on a website as, as being a former meth lab. Um, when is this first disclosed to you? And I said, right now. This is when it's first disclosed to us. It wasn't disclosed to us. I got off the telephone and called Brian and said, guess what? <laughs> we bought a meth lab. This is something you hear about happening. It's not something mm -hmm. you experience. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, you know, and as a few more days went on, it just, the seriousness really hit. Paging through old records from the local drug task force, Brian and Katrina discovered the most horrifying thing of all. The toddlers in Katrina's daycare were playing in the same area that police had identified as the location of the methamphetamine lab. It blew me away. It blew me away when I was online and I was looking at um, pictures of meth labs that had been raided and looking at the, the products and the beakers and the piping and all of the things that they were using in this cooking process and visualizing that in my daycare. Well, that's pretty much what, I, what they had been playing in for a year because the proper cleanup hadn't been done. Katrina notified her clients. Within days, her business and her family's livelihood collapsed. I shut it down. The parents started pulling their kids um, they were worried, they were scared, not knowing if my house was safe or not. And I wasn't able to give them any guarantees that it was. 
Brian and Katrina were even more worried about the health of their own children. Was our land safe? At what level of contamination was this house? Was it killing us? Were our kids going to develop brain tumors? Um, were the children in my care going to develop severe um, health, health problems? Although no studies have yet confirmed the long-term impact of exposure to these chemicals, a number of the substances are dangerously toxic. In spite of that, many states still do not require property owners selling a home to disclose if that home was ever used as a meth lab. And then you're stuck with a house that your whole life is in. Can't sell it. Can't afford to clean it. Yeah. Afraid to live in it. What do you do? Brian and Katrina moved their family into a rental. Soon after that, they found themselves unable to pay their mortgage. The bank foreclosed on the house. So, that quick, boom, 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 life went to hell. Went from living the American dream and being proud of ourselves and accomplishing above and beyond what we ever thought we'd be able to accomplish to having absolutely nothing. Losing their dream drove a wedge between Brian and Katrina. In quick order, the couple decided to divorce and filed for bankruptcy. There's no way to get back what we've lost. You can rebuild. You can start over again. You can hope that you'll at least have what you had and hope and pray that you even have more. But you don't get back a marriage. You don't get back a bankruptcy. You don't get back all of those things. In Larimer County alone, 68 meth labs have been found in houses and apartments since the beginning of 2001. And across the country, countless innocent Americans continue to live in homes that were once meth labs. Coming up, 